<laughs> whether on foot. Thank you. Or in a van. Lydia Bardak is a familiar face to many in Yellowknife as she tries to deal with all too familiar problems. That's only time they said I could go there. This man was kicked out of the day shelter here and is trying to figure out where to warm up in minus 25 degree cold. In Yellowknife, a city of just 20,000, Bardak estimates there are as many as 400 people homeless and in need of much more than just a place to live. The extent and the depth of mental health issues here in the north, it's enormous. Um, people are packing so much with them in terms of trauma, uh, unresolved grief and loss. Those common struggles have been brought up again and again at the inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Families from across the territory testified in Yellowknife this week. Maybe things would have been different, like maybe... Maybe we all could have got help sooner. Jada Andre spoke about her sister Joni, who was killed by her husband in the hamlet of Fort McPherson. The Northwest Territories has one of the highest rates of domestic violence in Canada, which is why Bardak believes the inquiry can't just be looking at ways to help women. I know that we want to focus on the women, but the women are asking for help for their men. And if women are in violent relationships, frontline workers say it can be hard to find a safe place to turn. Some small communities don't have shelters and others are frequently at capacity. Physical health would be nice if we Bree had Denning says this is supposed to be an emergency shelter, but some women have been here for years. So typically how many people would stay here in a given night? Um, 24. She says they stay because they don't have anywhere else to go. A lot of women have given up. Uh, we make it hard for them. And so Denning says it can take a few months to get an appointment with a mental health counselor, while others are told they have to leave the territory. It isn't right that they can choose between um, accessing the care that they need and being in the north. So it's amazing what we're doing. She says the social problems here have been well documented, so she isn't sure what difference the inquiry will make in the end. Of course I'm skeptical, but at least they're asking the questions and people have their moment to speak. I had lots of faith in And articulate for themselves the types of changes many have been calling for for years. Briar Stewart, CBC News, Yellowknife. Thank you for sharing the good memory. The next community hearings for the inquiry are scheduled for February 20th in Rankin Inlet, Nunavut. And the participants are likely prepared. The Rankin Inlet hearings were originally scheduled for December but were postponed.